Well, had to happen eventually, didn't it? The iPod Touch is officially dead. When Apple released the iPod in 2001, it was a hit with consumers and a huge moneymaker for the company. The iPod was vastly superior to other portable music players at the time. With 5GB of internal storage, it was much more spacious than other devices of the same time period, with competing music players boasting 32MB, 64MB, or even 128MB if you spent a bit more. Apple continued to experiment with different iPod form factors and released the iPod Mini in 2004. This model had similar features to the previous iPods, though it introduced the click wheel for the first time and added a few color options that the customer could choose as well. When the iPhone released in 2007, not only did Apple continue to improve on this iPod's design, they also introduced the iPod Touch a year later, in 2008. This device was very much like the iPhone, just lacking the ability to send texts or make phone calls. And with the first model, lacked a built-in speaker, meaning the user had to plug in headphones to hear anything other than simple beeps or clicks. While they made minor revisions to the iPod Touch over the years, the final design came out in 2012 with the iPod Touch 5th generation. The iPod Touch 5th generation was externally identical to the 7th generation, at least mostly. There are a few design differences here and there, but the outer shell is identical. This iPod uses the A5 chip and has 512MB of RAM. And it's basically been unchanged since then, and that same design has been used with the iPod Touch for almost 10 years. To put it into perspective, 2012 was the year the first Retina MacBook Pro released. 2012 was also when Windows XP was still relevant. And 2012 was the year Windows 8.0 and RT <coughs> released to the public. And yet this design stuck around the entire time. With all that in mind, this is the last iPod Touch that Apple will ever make. So. Let's see how it holds up. This iPod Touch has a slower version of what was in the iPhone 7. It has the A10 Fusion chip, and it also has two gigabytes of RAM. The design, although old, is still very sleek and modern looking, though obviously it still has a home button and top and bottom bezels. This device lacks any biometrics, meaning no touch or face ID, and it also lacks a neural engine, meaning that several new iOS 15 features are missing with this device. An example of one being offline Siri, which would have been super handy on a device like this. However, you can still combat this by enabling voice control instead of Siri, though it is a lot more primitive. You can do this on any iPod model as well, not just the 7th generation, and the 3rd and 4th gen iPod touches have this on by default. It'll let you pause and play music just by saying the respectable words, and even tell you the time for when you can't look at the screen. The time is 9.05 p.m. That's if you can get it to work. I have never had good luck with voice control, and if you've seen some of my previous videos, you'd know that very well. But hey. If it works for you, it could be a very useful feature. It's unfortunate that the end of the iPod is pretty much here. Apple has a wall supplies last section on their page. And in the US store at least, they're already gone at the time of recording this. Honestly, I'll be sad to see this thing go. Now, I've actually made quite a few videos with iPod Touches in the past. I will link a playlist up in the info card for people who want to see them. It's bittersweet, I would say, because with these iPods, there's not really many people who are really using these anymore, and that really shows because Apple is discontinuing them. If they were selling, well, Apple wouldn't be discontinuing them, they'd be still making these. You've still got diehard collectors, <laughs> like me, those kinds of people aren't going to be super interested in newer iPods anyways. I have a newer iPod, but I don't need it. I could totally sell this thing and would still be able to do everything I need to do. I'm just holding on to this thing now because, well, this is the last iPod they'll ever make. So, you know, might as well hold on to something, right? However, I do think part of the iPod Touch's fall is because of Apple's neglect toward it. I have not seen anyone else kind of bring this topic up, so I guess I'm going to be the first one to do it. Apple didn't really change the design much of the iPod Touch. The fifth generation, as I mentioned earlier, looks identical to this, and while the internals are different, sure, and the camera was upgraded from the fifth gen to the sixth gen, adding slow motion, they really didn't change much. And I think that if Apple had actually gone and made the seventh gen iPod Touch, let's just say bezel-less, with maybe Touch ID on the power button, I think it might have lasted longer. I think it might have sold better, but it's unfortunate to see that innovation never really happened, and I do think that is mostly the reason for the iPod Touch's demise. A topic that I did want to bring up here 
is the future of the current iPod Touch. What's gonna happen to the remaining iPod Touches left in the wild? These things are still currently supported with iOS 15, and to some people, they think iOS 16 should come to these as well because these have an A10 processor. And you might think that, but personally, I could see it going either way. This screen size is only found on one more device, and that is the first gen SE with an A9 processor. That device for sure is not going to be getting iOS 16. This will be the only four inch device that actually gets support for iOS 16, or will it? The A10 processor that is inside this iPod Touch is not exactly known for being faster. It's not exactly known for being like amazing. It's good, but it's worse than an iPhone 7 by a decent margin. In fact, it's actually very similar in performance. It is a little better, but it is very similar to performance as an iPhone SE first gen. With people saying, oh, it's got the A10 processor, it's gonna get iOS 16, I can see that happening. But for people who are saying, well, it's got a slower processor than the iPhone 7, which has the A10, and it's got a smaller screen size, which is not as well optimized for newer applications, I would say. It still works, but there are elements in the operating system that are shrunk down. Like a lot of elements, especially in the calendar, they get truncated. The screen is so small on these things that the way that the elements are positioned, they literally cannot fit on the screen. So in that regard, I actually don't think that this iPod Touch will be getting iOS 16. I think 15 is going to be the last OS for it. And honestly, I think that'd be a good stop for the iPod Touch. Now, I very well could be wrong, and I do hope I'm wrong, because iOS 16 on the iPod Touch would be pretty cool, but I wouldn't be surprised either way. Now, I'm thinking with the smaller screen size that these iPods have, it might not be such a good idea just because of that to introduce iOS 16 to it, because as apps continue to make newer versions and as they start optimizing for bigger devices, they're probably not going to focus so much on this, which is unfortunate, but I just don't see it happening because with these iPods, they're just not used by many people. And the apps that we do see nowadays that actually still run on here are starting to optimize for bigger displays because smaller displayed phones aren't so commonplace anymore. If you go to like an iPod Touch fifth generation, let's just say, and you go ahead and install the last compatible version of, well, YouTube doesn't work anymore. Let's just say SoundCloud. I will say at least SoundCloud actually is doing a very good job keeping these devices looking good, but that version of SoundCloud, while it still works at least, is going to look exactly the same forever and is going to be optimized for that device forever. There's so many Bs. However, it's probably the case when you have an iPod Touch running iOS 15, possibly even 16, that these iPods are not going to be optimized for, and you might even have to scroll left and right to see content. I have seen that before, and it's ridiculous. In that regard, I think that 15 would be a very good stopping point because, in my opinion, when you have smaller screen sizes and you have developers that aren't working with these smaller screen sizes, it might be good to kill these devices off and leave them with apps that might be better suited for them. It's why you don't see an iPhone 4 continuing to be optimized nowadays, but back then, if you go to the versions of apps that were designed for it, so let's say let's go back to iOS 7, iOS 7 only ran on mobile pocketable devices of devices this small, if not smaller. So apps were very much designed for that, but once you start seeing these devices with smaller screens not be so commonplace, it might be good to leave them on older operating systems because of that. So then the apps that are actually designed for these smaller screen sizes are more likely to be the last versions that actually support these things. However, I have someone else who is here who has their own opinion on the matter. And that person just so happens to be me. Although I'm not really here to wreck Matt's video with a bunch of memes this time. I probably would like to do that, but this isn't really the video for that. So, oops. Anyways, I digress. So, about the iPod. Well, this one really kind of just came out of nowhere, to be honest with you. And I believe it happened May 10th when Apple on their newsroom put out the press release of the iPod being discontinued. Although they really didn't talk about it too much. It was more or less just an advertisement for Apple Music on iPhones and Apple Watches, which, come on, seriously, Apple. And I think that they did the iPod a bit of a disservice. While I do appreciate the fact that they made the press room release, and they talked about how the iPod's legacy will live on. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. I didn't really remember reading it, but I do think that they 
probably could have given the iPod a little bit more fanfare than they did. I mean, they did have all those nice high resolution images that they put inside of a little sliding ticker tape thing and they made it, well, a real nice post, I suppose. But let's be fair, they could have done a better job in my opinion. Anyways, I digress about that part. At that time, the only way that I really knew about this iPod discontinuation thing was through that newsroom link being posted on Twitter from MKBHD. And it just struck me. It's like, wow, really? Apple's discontinuing this now? I was kind of surprised by that fact because I was going to buy an iPod at some point. I was going to get an iPod Touch just as a joke and actually have a use for one, like as a music player for my car or on walks or whatever the case might be. And I was going to get this meme spec, as I call it, which is pink and 128 gig, which, I mean, I have it here. After having seen that post, it just kind of just dawn on me it's like this isn't gonna last forever especially because on the order page they said while supplies last and that only means one thing stuff's running out get it now so that's exactly what i did i ended up ordering it and i got it literally the next day because i'm pretty sure they have a bunch of these things just sitting around or they probably did before they sold out of them and so that's how i was able to get mine with a fresh battery brand new from apple and i know what you're probably thinking it's probably one of the worst value ios devices that i probably could have bought and i and i understand that but I just wanted to have one of the last possible iPods to have been made before they completely shut down production and sales of the whole device series. And it kind of just feels a bit special in a way. It has a bit of a legacy, if you will, because it's an iPod. Having this one now kind of just signifies how things have changed, especially with music, because everybody streams music on their phone now, or they still somehow, I guess, buy their music. I don't know, maybe things are different these days, but I guess it just depends on the user, really. <laughs> it just makes no sense to buy an iPod anymore, unless, of course, you want something specifically with modding capabilities to put in way more storage than 256 gigs, which is what this would have maxed out at, then, you know, you could get it yourself on iPod Classic and you don't have to worry about all the iOS bloat. You just have a straight iPod with solid state storage or whatever have you that has more capacity than one of these could probably hold. And I suppose that's probably where the iPod and the modding community is probably just heading towards now, keeping the older iPods alive. And these ones just kind of fell by the wayside. At least that's just how I see it. And it's no surprise because Apple just kind of left the iPod Touch in this case, just lingering for dead. Once they had the fifth gen out where they had this very same design where it was super thin and it had all the colors and all that stuff, it just wasn't the same iPod really. Then the sixth gen came out, they put it in the A8 chip. And then now there's this seventh gen, which had an A10 chip and then it just never really got the love that it probably should have gotten. And that was partially just because Apple didn't really change anything other than the specs. And I don't consider that to be a bad thing, but when you have a device, let's just say, that doesn't have very good battery life like this does, kind of hurts when you're spending that much money on something that's probably not going to be useful for much more than music, even if it does run your apps. Holding this iPod in my hand now just makes me think of the days when I had different iPods when I was a a little bit younger. Now, I didn't grow up specifically having an iPod Touch. Uh, you know, obviously, I didn't have the money for that at the time. So, what I ended up with was a bunch of these burner cell phones. That was about the mixed technology that I had that I could really call my own. About the only iPod that I had, I got after I think I had a really crappy Samsung Android tablet. And it was more or less just like a, a side device, if you will. I got it from a yard sale. It was an iPod third generation Nano. It was the little stubby one, I think it was. It was in green, it was eight gigs. It was actually really cool. And I had that for a little while and I used it, sync some music onto it. And it was a really cool device until I forgot it was in a pants pocket and went to the washer. So it was a used device. So what are you gonna do? At least it wasn't new. So I didn't waste that, but it still kind of sucked because you know that was a really nice iPod, but things happen, I guess. Now I have had a couple of other iPods throughout time uh, before I was 18, let's just say. I had an iPod photo, I think it was. It was like a 30 gig iPod photo. I think that's what it was. It had the bright color display on it, but unfortunately that one didn't really work. And then I had the iPod Nano, and then I had a couple of touches. I had a third gen 32 gig iPod touch, and then I used that for a little while uh, as I was going through high school. And then I think at some point I had a fourth gen touch. It was an eight gig though. And that one I ended up getting rid of and I gave that to a friend. I never really had the experience of having an iPod that was my own and whatnot as I was growing up for the sake of what it was probably used for, which was games and communication and taking photos and videos with it. I did have uh, an iPod Touch 6 Gen at one point. It was, I think when I was in college, like at some point I got one secondhand on Facebook Marketplace 
and I want to say it was a 16 gig, but I could be wrong about that. I think they made a 16 gig 6 gen. Someone will have to correct me. But I had that one for a little while. It was pretty scuffed up, but it did work. And I used that for a little while. The thing with that, the 5th gen and the 7th gen, that really kind of irks me is why did they not include like auto brightness? Like you would think that that's the one feature that they would want to include, but they never really did include it. So I don't know. It just kind of struck me as odd that that's the one thing that they would cut corners on because they had it in the fourth gen at the same price. So why didn't they put that in the fifth gen? Like, I, I don't know. How do I feel though about the iPod and its legacy and you know going forward? I know that the iPod just was not being treated fairly. And this was especially true after Apple discontinued all of the, like there was the Nano, the Shuffle and the classic iPods. I wanna say were the last ones of the non-touch variety that were on sale. And then after that, they kind of just abandoned the iPod touch in a sense. I mean, they did the spec refresh for the seventh gen in 2019, but after that, I mean, they didn't really do too much to it to keep it current. And the design never really did get a change since the fifth gen other than different colors, which I mean, cool, I guess, but I mean, you can only do colors so many times before the device just ultimately gets stale due to the design and many other factors, including the camera, battery life, uh, sound quality through the internal speaker and so on and so forth. It was unfortunate that they never really did give it the one last send off that they could have or maybe should have, but you know, if they're gonna just kill it off, just kill it off and just put it out of its misery. There's no sense in keeping an old product that is pretty much suffering on the vine on the end of it, basically just struggling to, keep sales going it makes no sense you're, you're manufacturing an old chip that's on an old process it just doesn't really make much financial sense to just keep it going so i understand the reason why they had to do it eventually as sad as it is you have great potential that you could take advantage of but you never really did and now you're selling a product that seems hollow and doesn't really seem to serve a purpose. Let's just put it that way. And that's ultimately what the iPod ended up turning into in its later years with the sixth gen and the seventh gen, especially. It just, it, it, it's sad that it's gone, but I don't think it'll ever be forgotten. Let's just put it that way. The legacy of the iPod, especially the classic, the Nano, the Shuffle, even in some cases, the legacy of those devices are gonna be the ones that are gonna live on in people's memories. The Touch always had some soft spots for people, including myself. I've always loved the iPod Touch as a concept, as you know, just you see your album art with your music and you get to have apps, games. You have cameras in the case of this iPod, Ain't that cool? But it just fell short. And so it never really did catch on to me because at that time, of course, I've had cell phones. So it really didn't make sense to have an iPod because all the cell phones I ever had, with the exception of my iPhone 5S and probably a couple of the other ones I had on the side that had 16 gigs or less, they basically served my purposes. And since I pay for a streaming music platform, even though it's not my favorite way to get music, it works and I can use it streaming on my phones and in the car, I can pretty much do everything like I would back in the day. And it costs less money at least right now to me rather than buying music overall I mean of course at the disadvantage that you don't get to own your music but I guess that's just how people's preferences have gone these days the just matter of convenience rather than to I guess own your stuff it's kind of going all by the wayside and yeah not that the cameras have really any redeeming quality to them it's basically the same sensor i would say as the iphone 5s and it's been the same way since the ipod touch 6th generation when it pretty much last got a major hurrah with hardware other than just an soc bump the last part of the video that you guys are watching was shot on this device here an iphone 13 mini and obviously it has a substantially better set of cameras on it. It was actually taken with the front camera in this case. And yeah, the front camera doesn't have any redeeming qualities to it either. Does this say enough about why people weren't using these? So that's about all I have for this particular video. I know that I could talk more, but to be honest with you, I'd rather not waste too much time. And to be honest with you, pretty much beating the dead horse more dead. So there's just, Unfortunately, no real need for an iPod these days as far as a standalone music playing device because you're pretty much going to use your phone for that purpose anyway, whether it be local music or if you're going to stream something from some music streaming service. And so the iPod just be it just basically becomes irrelevant, which just goes to show that even though technology has slowed down as far as its developing pace, it still doesn't mean that it stays still. You know, obviously things like this are just going to become rapidly obsolete. And who knows? Maybe... Um, 
some other practical purpose will come along the way for other things to come, I guess. I don't know. I'm rambling at this point. So with that having been said, rest in peace, iPod, and back to you, Matt. That's pretty much it for this video. Huge thank you to Jordan for joining this video and sharing his own opinion as well. I really am going to miss the iPod Touch. These devices pretty much powered my childhood. I bought my 5th gen iPod Touch back when iOS 8 was the latest operating system for it. I've loved them ever since. I think iPod Touches are beautiful devices. I love their purpose of them because they run full iOS, even though, unfortunately, they won't be making any more of these. So the fact that this guy is still on its latest software, that's only going to be a matter of time before that's not the case anymore. Tell me in the comments if you guys have any fond memories with iPod Touches, or tell me in the comments if you guys still use iPod Touches as a send off for iPods, at least for the channel. If you guys want me to use this thing for a week, if this video hits 100 likes, I'll do it. And to make myself suffer even more, I'll use an iPod Touch 5th generation for a week if this video hits 250 likes. I know it's a pretty big goal, but I really don't want to do this again. <laughs> Hit the like goal, and uh, I'll do them. Like I said, 100 likes for the 7th gen, 250 likes for the 5th gen. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hit the like button if you like the video, and get subscribed if you like the content that you see on this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys all later. Rest in peace, iPods.